Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the first of my arm thumb assembly programming tutorials. Now, I've covered arm before, but now we're looking at arm thumb. What's arm thumb? Well, arm is a instruction set which uses 32 bits per command. So all of the commands are really four bytes in size. Now, that's typically not a problem, but there may be some cases where memory is especially tight. So they developed arm thumb, and this uses just two bytes, 16 bits per command. So this is intended really for your small game cartridges, and especially for firmware for devices that don't have much ROM available to them, or possibly RAM as well. So arm thumb is an alternative for more limited programming, and I thought it would be a good idea to cover it because while I think ARM is going to be better for most beginners because it's the more advanced instruction set and you're not likely to be limited by memory, I wasn't really doing ARM justice by just discussing the regular instruction set and ARM thumb is pretty easy to cover so I thought I'd go into it as well. Now these tutorials will be covering all of ARM thumb and should be relatively usable on their own if you don't know the basic ARM instruction set. But that said, I would strongly advise you do learn uh, the, the classic ARM instruction set because it's more powerful, because the processor starts in ARM mode and you need to switch to thumb, and because it would seem very odd unless you're doing some kind of university course and only need to know ARM thumb to, to learn the thumb instruction set and not the regular one. Anyway, I'm afraid at this point I do need to show my book. I have a book which covers Z865026. 68,0086 and classic arm, not arm thumb, I'm afraid, but um, you can get it at the moment on Amazon. It's called Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with Chibi Akamas. And if it's a success, I will do another book in the future and I will cover arm thumb in it at that point. So anyway, um, we're going to be covering arm thumb and we will be um, discussing the new limitations that are put on us and, as I say, going into how the instructions have become more limited. Basically, this will be a sort of mirror of the original series, discussing what are now the available commands to us and in a lot of cases they are more restricted because there is half the data space available for the commands so the commands have been cut down accordingly. Now our register set is the same, it's the same registers available to us however they've now been split into two halves. The registers 0 to 7 are now our main registers and pretty much all of the commands can work with those. However, the registers 8 onwards are now an extended set that the vast majority of commands cannot use. There are a few that can switch data between them, but in most cases our commands, our mathematical commands and things are limited to registers 0 to 7. And again, this is because there's fewer bits in the commands now to select registers with and things. So we, we are cut down in that way. And there's a lot of other restrictions as well, which we'll go into our as things progress but as I say the first one you need to understand is the limitation of the registers now let's just go straight over now and let's go over to our source code and let's take a look at um, a, a simple example so here's our simple example and we, if we just fire this up here we can see this will work on the Game Boy Advance and it will also work on the Nintendo DS I've written code that will support both so Here's our basic example and what it basically does is it will show a monitor to the screen and this dumps the registers to the screen. So we can see all of the registers to the screen here. And of course this is all of the registers, not just the first eight that the arm thumb uses as its primary registers. And then we've got a mem dump which is just so we can see parts of the memory. Again, just some tests that we've done before in the main series. Now the thing I really want to discuss in this is the new thumb commands. Well, basically our processor will start in regular mode and we need to switch to thumb mode and we do that with the new branch and exchange function. And this branch and exchange function will take an address in a register and we're jumping to thumb test here, but it has a bit of an odd quirk and that is that the bit zero of the address that it is passed isn't actually part of the address because of course the addresses all need to be word lined or possibly 16 bit aligned if we're using thumb code, but the bit zero actually defines the new state of the processor. If the bit zero is a one, then we're jumping to thumb code. If it's a bit zero, we're jumping to regular ARM code. So here on VASM, I've set bit one. So here I've set bit zero to a one by adding one to this address here. Now some assemblers might allow you to do a plus one, but I, w I wasn't managing to get that working with this one. So what I was doing is just adding it as a separate command here. And then our branch and exchange will jump here and switch to thumb mode. However, we also need to tell the assembler to start compiling thumb code. So we've used the assembler directive dot thumb in this case to do that. That will tell the assembler to start making thumb code. Now, 
if we wanted to jump to full a, a true arm code, non, not thumb code, we just need to jump to an address with the bottom bit as a zero, bit zero would be zero, and that will jump to normal arm code. However, if I compile this now, well, you can see we've got a blank screen because our code is still thumb code. So you need to tell the assembler what kind of code to create. And in the case of VASM, we can use the dot arm assembler directive here to tell the assembler to start creating normal full arm code, that's 32-bit code, rather than the thumb 16-bit code. So that is how we switch to thumb mode. Of course, the ARM processor will start in full 32-bit mode. Now, one of the change I've made here with my compiling scripts is I've added this no I align command, which will stop the assembler aligning to 32-bit boundaries for the commands because that was causing some problems with VASM. So that's what I've done. Um, not too much has changed really here, but this is allowing us to run some simple test code. And if you want to get started, you can download, of course, my build scripts and this simple minimal example here, which you can use hopefully as a foundation for your own little test programs. Anyway, today we're going to be starting with lesson one and we're going to be starting with our program here. So our program starts, we're switching to thumb mode automatically. All of our code is really going to be in thumb mode, to be honest, because I say that's the new thing. So we're just starting up here. We're jumping with this branch and exchange here to thumb test. And then we're going to be branching to one of our tests here. So we're going to start by branching to the label test moves. So this is going to test some simple mathematical values. So we're branching to test moves, which is this label just here. Now, we're going to be doing some simple tests as we've done before. So we're going to be loading the value 12 in hexadecimal to register R0. You can see it's hexadecimal because it starts at 0x. And then we're going to move the value 255, which is FF in hexadecimal, into R1. If we just fire this up, we will see those happen here. So we've loaded hexadecimal 12 into R0, and you can see that has happened here. Here's R0, and here it's now loaded with 12 there and then we've loaded FF into R1. Well, that looks all very straightforward and nice and easy, but um, Thumb has introduced some limitations. We can load up to 255 just fine, but if we try and load a value of 256 or more, and we compile now, oh dear, we've got an error. And if we just look here, it says Thumb 8-bit unaligned immediate offset out of range, 256. We can't load even as small as value as 256. We can't load in as an immediate value into a register. So that's a new limitation there. Um, we were loading hexadecimal there, but we can, of course, load binary with 0b here. We can load the binary value 10 here, which is 2 in hexadecimal. And if we just fire that up, that will, of course, work because um, that value is, of course, below 255, stating the obvious there. We can also load a decimal value. We just don't put the 0x at the start. And 65 is an ASCII value. Unfortunately, VASM doesn't seem to support um, ASCII in line. Usually you'd be able to use some kind of quotes, but I've never managed to find a way of doing it. So uh, it seems to be impossible. But if we need ASCII values, we can calculate themselves, look them up and um, just put them as numbers here. Anyway, so that's w how we can load immediate values in various formats there. Um, of course, we do have the limitations, but we also have a limitation with regards to the registers. Now, we've done all of these with registers 0 and 1. Now, I just tend to use those as a test. We could use 2 and 3, of course. What we can't use is register 8 and higher. These are now uh, the sort of high set of registers that the vast majority of commands can't support. So if I try and compile this, um, well, it's failed because that register is simply too high. So if we want to set register 8 to the value 10, we actually need to do it via another register in this case. So we're loading register 0 with 10 and then moving it to register 8. We've got some special move commands that can move between high and low values. So that will work just fine. And if we run that, we can now see our register 8 is set to 0a here. And that is 10 in hexadecimal. So we can use those high registers. We just don't have very much flexibility with them. Now, if we want to load values above 255, if we want to load 256 or indeed any value, then what we actually need to do is put them in our code somewhere with a nice label. So we've got test value here and we've got this nice 32-bit value here at that label. And so we can use that value. You can see here we're loading in register zero with the test value here 
and if we run now well you can see that value has been loaded into register 0 2 4 6 8 there that has worked just fine there are again some limitations though we can't load register 8 directly into test value that won't work we've got an error now that won't work we can't do that the other thing we can't do is we can't load addresses that are before the current running line you see if we've got to try and load this thumb test here well what's thumb test well it's actually the label up here at the start of our code and it's it's not the fact that there's code there that's the problem it's the fact that it's before the current program counter the current running line of code the, the, again, another limitation of the thumb instruction set is that the source of a register load like this, when it's a label, has to be after the current program counter. So we've got a couple of commands we've looked at here for loading registers. We've got move for loading immediates and also for transferring a register value from one to another. And we've got LDR for loading from an address. And in this case, it, we were loading from the address test value into R0. And you'll notice with these commands that typically the value on the right is the source and the value on the left is the destination. So R1 here was the source and R0 was the destination. And in the case of LDR, the source was on the right, the address and the destination was on the left, the register. But we'll see that there is a bit of an exception for that in just a moment. So that's how we can load various values into our registers. Well, what about mathematics? Well, we've got some um, new limitations once again. One of these is that we can't load negative values into registers. So um, we can't load minus four directly into R1, that won't work. But what we can do is we can load zero into R0 or R1, and then we can sub do a subtraction. So here we are subtracting the immediate value four from register R0, that will work just fine. If we run this here, you can see here that we've subtracted four. And so our register R0 now contains a lot of Fs and then the value C, which is minus four. So that's one way that we can create a negative number. There are some other options though. For example, here we are loading register R1 with eight and then we are using the MVN command, which stands for move not. And this effectively flips all the bits of the parameter, in this case R1, and then stores the result in R0 here, the destination on the left. So if we just compile this here, you can see we have loaded R1 with the value eight here, and then we've effectively flipped all of the bits here and stored the value in R0 here, which is effectively minus nine. So we're, there we go. So that's another option for loading values that is available to us. However, move not is only capable of working with registers. We can't use an immediate value. So this move not R0 with the immediate value of eight will not work. We can only use register sources. Another option to us is the negate command. This will of course turn a positive value into a negative. In this case, we're taking the value in register one on the right and we are negating it and storing it back into register one on the left. And if we just run that, well, you can see we've taken the value eight and we've negated it and that's become negative eight there on the last line there. So that's another way that we can create negative numbers immediately without storing them at labels, which of course is a perfectly good option as well. So we've got quite a few options, but we are more limited now in what we can do. Next, we're going to try some add commands. If we, we're just changing our label here, we're branching to this test ads. So if I just jump down here, so this is our next label and we're gonna be trying some more mathematics here. Okay, so let's take a look. So what we're doing here first is we are moving a zero into R zero and then we're loading the test value again into R one. And you can see that test value just here. What we're then going to do is we're going to do some addition and subtraction of immediates. Now you can see these commands are taking three parameters. The parameter on the left is the destination. So the first line is taking R zero and it's setting R zero to R one plus seven. The second command is setting R1 to R1 minus seven. So we can specify a source and a destination register and an immediate value. And the destination register can, but doesn't have to be the same as the source. So that, that's what we're doing here. And you can see these happening here. So we've taken R1 and we've effectively subtracted seven here. So that's gone down by seven. You can see that on that second line there and that's because of this line here. And we've added seven to R 
R1 and stored the result in R0. So you can see we've taken that value there and we've stored it here, but we've added 7 to it. So there we go. So these allow for a source and destination register and an immediate to be specified, but we but this is only capable of very small values. This is only capable of up to 7. So for example, if I try and compile with this command here, which is trying to add 10, this will now not compile. I, I can't compile that. If I want to add 10 as an immediate, I can do so. There's an alternate form of this command. Rather than these commands which allow a source and destination register to be specified, there are some alternate commands which just allow the destination and allow a value to be added or subtracted up to 255. So these are effectively R0 equals R0 plus hexadecimal 10 or R1 equals R1 minus hexadecimal 10. Less flexibility than these, but a larger range of values. So we can do those. And if we just run here, we'll see those. So here we've taken our values here and we've added 10. You can see that the value in R0 has gone up by 10. And here we've taken this value and we've subtracted 10 and the value has gone down by 10 in R1. So we've got some flexibility. We just have to basically sacrifice which registers we're using here. But I'm told that overall arm thumb will typically result in smaller programs with the same kind of or possibly higher efficiency with regards to speed because although sometimes we need to use more commands to get the same job done the, the commands are smaller in size so take less loading time for the processor at least that's what I've heard now in these cases we've been using immediate values of one size or another we can also of course work with registers so this time we're going to load our test values again and this time we're going to do add and subtraction where both of the source parameters and the destination parameters are registers if I just fire up our code here and we'll just see these in action so this time we're going to take r0 and we're going to add our R1 to R0 and then we're going to store it in R0 so it's R0 equals R0 plus R1 effectively and then we're going to do R0 equals R0 minus R1 and we will see those results just here. So here's our value of R1 and this is of course loaded from our test value and then we're taking our value R0 and we are adding R1 so it's got up to this large value here and then we've subtracted R1 again and it's gone back down to the original starting value and that's because of these commands here so you know, we've we basically ended up where we started but we can show that we're able to add and subtract registers to registers and store the result in potentially a third register of course we could have done just because I'm, I'm, I'm using R0 and R1 over and over again here because that's how my monitor is set up these will all work from register 0 to 7 just fine so I can compile this we can't see the results on the screen but this will of course compile just fine as well now when it comes to higher registers we have much fewer options available to us we do have some commands that work with registers 8 onwards however they don't allow for these com complex um, configurations or the immediates but we can add a register to another register so here we're adding r0 to the value r8 so it's r8 equals r8 plus r0 what we don't have is a, a subtract command we that's not available to us so we can't do that of course if r0 was negative that would effectively and adding a negative number would effectively do a subtract but again we've got some limitations there but we can at least do some simple stuff with the higher registers basically what you want to do is use 0 to 7 as your main stuff and um, maybe just use the r8 and onwards as your sort of temporaries or maybe as simple loop counters and things that don't need to do much work at all so here you can see we've done that and here is r8 and you can see we were able to add r0 to r8 there so R8 and onwards do have some capability still for us. So that's working with immediate values, loading immediate values and doing some simple mathematics. What we're going to do last is some more loading and storing of values to and from RAM. Now we did do some loading of values with this test value here. It's really with arm thumb, it's really quite difficult to not do loading of values from memory because of the um, zero to two five five limitations of immediates. But we're going to go into it a little bit more and we're going to look at the start of some of the addressing modes that are available to us. And we're going to look at LDR, which we've already seen, which will load from a label to a register. But we're also going to look at the STR command which is the store command and this one is a little bit of a 
contradiction compared to the others it was, was with classic arm as well because usually the left hand parameter is the destination but with the store command the right hand parameter is the destination and now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at loading and storing to addresses that are calculated via a register and an offset we're going to look in more in more depth next time into the addressing modes but for starters we're just going to look at some basic ones so we're loading a test value into R0 and then a test address into R1. And what we're going to do here is we're going to store R0 into the test address in R1 plus an offset of 0. So basically just the test address itself. And then we're going to store R0 again to the test address R1 plus an offset of 8. And these are, of course, storing 32-bit values. The LDR and SDR commands will work in 32 bits by default because although ARM thumb is 16 bits, uh, the commands are 16 bits, the processor is still a 32-bit processor, so these are still working in 32 bits. So what are we doing here? Well, you can see here the starting values of our test memory here, and that's the memory that R1 is pointing to. R0 is our test value of 22446688 and what we've done is we've stored R0 to R to the test RAM offset by 0 and then offset by 8 and you can see that here here's the offset of 0 here and that value has been stored there in little Indian and there's the offset of 8 there and it's been stored again now that's our first two tests and then what we've done is we've loaded registers R2 and R3 from those same addresses just to show that it's not just storing that can work with offsets the load can work with offsets and these offsets are of course immediate values now when we've loaded back you can see R2 and R3 now contain those test values as well because of course those loads have worked as well now here we've worked with immediate values but we can also work with values held in registers for example here we're loading R2 with 4 and then what we're going to do is we're going to store the R0 value at address R1 plus R2 which is effectively R1 plus 4 so it's going to store in between the two values we loaded and stored from originally and if we just fire this up now you can see that has indeed happened so we've got 88664422 which was our first store then we've got our last one at 88664422 here at the end of our range but this middle one 88664422 has been added you can see it wasn't there before and that has been done by our command just here now one limitation though is this will only work with word aligned 32-bit aligned addresses if we try and use a 16-bit aligned address so we're just adding two here well that store has not happened and the reason is that they need to be 32-bit aligned we do have some commands for working with 16-bit values and that would work with those um, but the 32-bit does require 32-bit alignment, even in values stored in registers there. So how can we work with 16-bit and 8-bit values? Well, if you've seen classic ARM, then you will know we still have our B command for byte and H command for half. So half is a half word, 16 bits, and that will allow us to load bytes and 16-bit values. And we also have a store command for storing 8-bit bytes and 16-bit halves as well. And these will work in the same way. So if we just fire up, we can see these in action now. So what we've done is we've loaded R2 with our test RAM again. And what we're going to do is we're going to load a byte from the test RAM offset by 0. We, are, we do have to specify the 0 in this case, even if... We, we, even if it could be inferred you know we can't just specify r2 in square brackets that won't work and then we're loading a half into r1 so we're loading from the same address but we're loading as a byte and a half and these are unsigned values so these will be treated as just individual bytes so let's take a look at what's happened so here's our values here at our test data 88664422 and we've loaded these into r0 we loaded a byte into r0 so we've got 88 and here we've loaded a half into R1, so we've got 6688 here. And you can see that that has happened because we loaded with these commands just here. Now we're going to create some test values here. So what we're going to do is we're going to load R0 with 0, and then we're going to subtract 1, effectively flipping all the bits of R0. And we're going to move that into R1, just so we've got some test values. So R0 and R1 now equal all Fs here. So we've got some nice test values there. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to store a byte from R0 into R2 offset by 4 and then we're going to store a half, so 16 bits, into R2 offset by 8 and we'll be able to see those in our test data. And our byte offset by 4 has been stored here. You can see that FF there, that is the byte value that was stored and the half, the 16 bit, has been stored just here. FF, FF, that's the 16 bit value there. So you can see that storing bytes and storing halves is perfectly possible with a numeric offset there. And of course, we can also use a register for loading offsets. Here we are using R2 offset by R3, and we're loading a byte and a half again here using that. And in this case, because R3 equals 2, we're offsetting by two bytes here. So we're loading from this 4422 range. And when we've loaded our byte here, we've got 44. And when we've loaded our half, we've got 2244 because we were loading from this range here. Now, our final test is we're going to be loading a signed byte, and this will, again, load from the same kind of addresses, but this time it will be signed extended to fill the, the value based on the top bit of the loaded amount. So, for example, if we load a byte into R0 from our address range, offset by 0, then this will effectively load in this 88 value, and because the top bit is a 1, that will be signed extended and will make the 32-bit value negative. But if we load in a 16-bit value, a half here, well, the top bit is a zero. So when that sign extended, it's setting all the bit other bits to a zero here. So there we go. So we've gone over a brief introduction. I know it's been a bit quick of the um, some of the simple commands and how to get started. Now, as I always say, what I recommend you do is go to my website, download my build scripts and download the examples. These are in my ARM um, development tools. I've updated them with these new examples and I've tweaked the scripts so they will work just fine. So I, I'd suggest you go and have a go with them and hopefully you'll be able to get started. I've also updated the cheat sheet on my website. If you go to my website, there is a cheat sheet somewhere. Where is it? It's at the top, here it is. So the cheat sheet has been improved and now has a, um, an extra section for the thumb commands. So that would hopefully help you out as well. Now, next time we're going to be looking at more detail of the available addressing modes because although they are more limited, there are an awful lot of them. So we've only really covered it very briefly today just as an introduction, but we're gonna see that in more detail next time. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit the like button, please subscribe, because that really helps me out. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people and maybe they'll like them as well. It's always possible. And if you subscribe, well, it keeps me motivated to keep making more tutorials because it takes all my time up with a lot of work. So it would really help me out. But anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've managed to learn something. I hope I've done a vaguely decent job. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.